Hello Aquarius, welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber. If you're new, welcome. I hope you enjoy the reading. It's a general reading for your sign. Okay, so let's see what we've got for you. Okay, so for you, we've got Taurus I have, and we've got Fourth House. So um, please don't forget to like and share or like and subscribe uh, the videos as that does help to move them around um, YouTube. Um, the, this reading is for you and your person, your significant other, your special someone, or your sacred union, or whatever you, you are involved in. You may have just been together for a short time, or you may have been uh, married and with, uh, you know, with children. Uh, just take it as it resonates for your situation. We've also got, so we've got Taurus, fourth house, and we've got air elements. So certainly um, a relocation or a change for your person, or communication about it at any rate. We've got seventh house, so this is just highlighting the relationship itself. And we've got Sagittarius. So Sagittarius definitely coming in for you. That Sagittarian energy. Um, we've got third house messages uh, messages at the bottom of the deck there. with inner children uh, inner child or to do with the children around you at this time it could be they could be your children and we've got Sedna Mother Mary lovely bottom of the goddess deck is Yamanya golden opportunity so as I said with the sa that Sagittarian energy whether it comes in with the uh, eclipse or um, with Jupiter moving through Pisces, there, you know, good opportunity for whatever is right for you. It could be healing, it could be some some other opportunity. The end of a tough cycle approaches. This bottom of the deck is emotions are running high in Supermoon. Okay. Perseverance, okay. All right, so um, so for you, the, the energy that's coming in for you, um, there may be aspects um, associated with you and then associated with your person. Uh, they may be interchangeable, so you may see something uh, for your person, which is actually a, a message for you as well, and vice versa. So we've got um, Taurus I have, and we've got Kuan Yin. So, uh, Kuan Yin, compassion, um, a full moon uh, may be important for you. As I said, that full moon lunar eclipse may, may highlight something which then triggers this. So, as I said, a full moon often can be associated with forgiveness. Um, so, with compassion, release judgments about yourself and others and focus on the love and light that is within you, with, that is within everyone. So, Aspects are going to come up at some point um, to do with this. And when you release judgments about yourself and about other people, then what you do is you 
um, you come back to a form of um, neutrality. And that's a wonderful place to be because then you can um, make decisions based on uh, your instincts and your intuitions uh, as opposed to an emotional um, reaction. Um, so you respond rather than react. So this is always important around, uh, you know, with this energy, with the full moon. But it's about compassion towards yourself as well. Very, very important. A lot of people have difficulty with that. They are not compassionate towards themselves. Um, they have a, a backtrack in their mind, which is critical, uh, unhelpful, unloving, um, and uh, nitpicky and whatever the situation may be. You have to stop that backtrack. You have to, you have to rewrite uh, what is going on behind the scenes. You have to focus on compassion towards yourself, you know, direct love towards yourself. So what you would do for a best friend, what you would do for your child or somebody else that you love in your life, you must do it for yourself first. Um, then what you do, when you do that, when you give back to yourself like that, then you fill up your cup and then you are able then to um, share that with others. And it brings you back to a state of compassion. If you're not being compassionate with yourself, then you more than likely not going to be with anybody else either. So work on that. Something may come up at this time. Taurus, I have. It is a very um, grounded and earthy um, sign. So it may be uh, that you need to do some grounding meditations at this time uh, or spend time in nature to earth yourself, to you know get your feet on the ground, your bare feet on the ground. It could be through gardening. Uh, it can be through any kind of activity which is land related, earth related, garden related. It could even be pot plants, whatever you've got around you. So earth yourself, get t back, uh, ground yourself and get yourself in touch with nature. It could also be related possibly within your situation here because your person has got fourth house and this is Taurus it could be that you are approaching a situation where you're changing house or you're changing something around your living conditions and um uh, or it could be related to your person and uh, you're in, somehow involved. Uh, because Taurus can be about uh, real estate, uh, property, things like that, land, anything related to that may be coming up for you. Uh, and it's also about material things, um, your material possessions, but it can also be about ownership. So, you know, what it is that you own, uh, the accumulation of wealth, all of those things come in with Taurus. Now, um, it is a very sensual sign, so possibly that can also be coming in to do with the relationship, you know, getting in touch with your sensuality. Taurus loves sensual things, um, luxurious fab fabrics, luxurious things around home comforts, creature comforts. Um, all the all the comforts of home that is very much a Taurian thing, and um, the Taurus energy they don't like change. They like things to remain uh, steady, um, and um, so that they can grow. You know, stay still so that they can grow. So it could be that you have a situation where you do need to grow in some way, and you may just have to be open to making a few changes um, at this time in order to grow. And so uh, you know, with other people around you, perhaps there are different opinions or you're having to help you know get people in to assist you or you're having to do a lot of things like juggling and changing things around and this is where the compassion comes in for yourself and for others during periods where things can be a little bit stressful but it is about the accumulation of wealth possibly that is an aspect that is coming up within your relationship um, all monetary matters do come in with Taurus as well and um, it's also about you know, as I said, standing firm in some way, shape or form, um, and uh, but not so fir firm that you can't move, you know, that you're not too bogged down with material things or a fi in a fixed mindset or a fixed way of doing things that you can't actually bend and sway or shift if you have to. So all of these aspects coming in. Um, with the Perseverance card, it can also be that, that this is a Taurian quality that possibly you do need to bring in. So stay grounded. Keep your feet on the ground. Um, perseverance may be coming in for you. We'll see now how it goes. But that is certainly a, a Taurian quality to keep going, to you know, keep moving in the same direction or keep um, on with something uh, to persevere until you have a, the result that you want. And that may take time, you know. Um, so Taurians can be quite patient, patient, so possibly you need to bring that in as well. So we've got here um, 
for your person, we've got Nematona and we've got fourth house. So as I said, fourth house is everything to do with the home. The actual physical home, the actual structure, um, something may be changing there, either a renovation or a move or some sort of shift or change. Or um, It could also be to do with uh, where this person is currently residing. It may not be their actual home, you know. Um, but it can also be to do with the um, atmosphere in the home and the people in the home, Something, something coming up there. Um, uh, and uh, we've also it, it can also be the relationship to um, uh, their relationship to their roots, to their foundation, to their ancestry or ethnic identity. You know where they've come from and the people that you know the family that they've come from. So Nematona sacred space. Um, it's saying that uh, create an altar or visit a power place to connect with the divine. So what it's saying is that they need to um, create some space in their home life. Now, if you have been together for some time, obviously this is going to affect you as well because you'd be in the same home. But it could also be that they need to do this. <coughs> It's about creating a sacred space within the home environment. Now, this can just be a quiet private space. It can be a corner in the home. It can be a mantelpiece, uh, but just somewhere where you put your candles and your special things. It could be, um, you know, crystals, um, candles, um, items that are abundant um, and memorable uh, or have special significance in some way. And um, possibly feng shui could be coming in as well. Perhaps that is needed at this time. But it's about connecting to... Uh, source uh, via a quiet space uh, through meditation or through having a space uh, which is created for that. It couldn't even just be a nice armchair in a quiet spot um, surrounded by things that um, that are enjoyable and loving and um, r have good memories attached to them. Uh, it can also be that um, possibly uh, if there is a relocation on the cards, it's possible that uh, a place which has some significance, um, whether it's spiritual significance or just a power place, um, it could be a mountainous area. You've got air element coming up here, um, which can be a mountainous area. Uh, it could even be a, a, a piece of land somewhere which is has significance in some way. So it, that could all be tied up uh, with this energy. But it is saying to them that they also need to um, find the sacred space within themselves but also within the environment, some way that's allocated to bring about peace and harmony and connection to source uh, because they may be surrounded by situations or people uh, around them that um, are, are disturbing their sacred space or they're not getting enough time in order to do this you need to all we all need to do this at some point to connect to make good decisions and um, to move forward in certain things to get guidance from within and that's how you do it you do it through a sacred space they could also be going possibly or may need to go somewhere to pray um, or to meditate or to, to some sort of power place, whether it's in nature or a physical building somewhere which is, has significance for them, um, just to get guidance or to uh, clear their energy. Now, uh, for the current situation, we've got air element communication, communicating, we've got Damara guiding children. So if you have children, this can be relating to them. Um, um, or it could be other children that you're surrounded by at this time, or it could be something to do with a project that perhaps you were involved in, one or either of you or both of you, um, or it could be connecting to your inner child. So with your family, uh, your person's family situation, this could be where they have spent their childhood. Perhaps they are wanting to move back there or change something, or they may have to visit um, and this has, is changing certain things within your relationship or it's necessary for the relationship or it's in significance in some way. Um, so this could be issues to do with childhood, either where they've lived, who they've interacted with, who's been in their household. Maybe they're still in their household, whatever the situation is. Um, it's saying you are good at helping, counseling and healing children. Use your skills to help children now. So however it comes in for you, whatever is applicable, it could also be your inner child or the um, inner child within both of you. Um, uh, this is about connecting to that playful energy, the, the joy in the moment, living in the moment, playful energy, creativity, um, lots of energy, enjoying nature um, and uh, just having fun, really. So perhaps that needs to be brought in uh, to the relationship at this time or it's connected to fam family uh, roots, foundations um, uh, and it's to do with childhood memories or possibly it's to do with uh, communications about moving or visiting, whatever the situation may be. With air element communicating, it's saying that communication is hugely important here. Uh, in this current situation. So this um, this is about also manifestation is huge with this card. So 
This is about manifesting what you want. Um, and this is, you do this by uh, positive thoughts, positive uh, words, and also you, you kind of speak things into existence. You kind of talk positively. You have a plan. You draw up a plan. Um, and you plot and plan how you're going to go about it, what research you're going to do, where you're going to look. Um, are you going to take a journey to go there? Because uh, this card can also bring in journeys. Um, it could be that you're waiting to hear about news. You could be waiting to hear about news about ch your children or something to do with children or family. Um, or it could be that you just need to take a little bit of an adventure, let your inner child run free, go somewhere where this is possible. Um, but it's, it's, it's research, it's electronics. It can be advanced electronics or it can be an upgrade of your electronics. Um, it can also be to do with hearing news or receiving news. Um, or, um, you know, some sort of information that comes to you via the internet or however it is. It could even be over the radio. It could be just a, some sort of guidance that comes to you from heaven. Um, but manifestation is huge with this. So think positive, speak positive, speak it into your, into existence. Your words are spells. So cast good spells about what it is that you're aiming for. This could involve a mountainous area or visiting a mountainous, mountainous area, or it could just be simply lifting your perception and your perspective. You can do that by going to a high place, but you can also use it to, um, to, to, to you know, to uh, literally, so going hiking or going away somewhere where you can get high up and that just lifts your, your energy. It could also be air travel that's involved here. Um, so any of these areas may be coming in to do with your current situation. Um, now we have got here um, full moon in Capricorn. So full moon, as I said, is always about a result, something coming to a head, um, something sort of, um, you know, coming to a, a, a point. And um, it's saying full moon in Capricorn. So this is the end of a tough cycle approaches. So this is um, saying that, you, you know, your perseverance, you're going to need to persevere just to get through the last part of the cycle. Um, have a plan, have a structure, um, work on your foundation. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of got an ambitious energy about it as well. But it's it's saying that the end is in sight, that there the is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and you are going to get there. You just need to get through the last part now. And that is going to require perseverance. It's going to require determination. It's going to require a plan. So with your air element, use that um, energy. The air element is always about communication, but it's a very mental energy as well. So use whatever research tools, whatever you can, networking, talking to others, exchanging ideas, whatever you have to do to come up with this. Um, just be aware, obviously, Mercury retrograde communications can sometimes go awry sometimes things get misunderstood or misinterpreted or emails don't get sent or documents get delayed and so on specifically till the 22nd of uh, 29th of may sorry till the 22nd of june and there's a couple of days on either side as well but it's saying that there, there is a uh, light at the end of the tunnel and that is approaching So your emotions may be high with the super moon. Everything is magnified uh, with this energy. But what it is saying is that whatever you plan, you come up with here, whatever you are trying to do, whatever you're aiming for, uh, you know, that you're working towards with this perseverance. This is saying uh, uh, it's it, the success is, is, is going to come of this. It's either a big yes or it's a successful um, outcome or some kind of result which is going to be pleasing for you. So whatever whatever it is that you're um, aiming for here, there is going Going to be a good result but the emotions are high so what you have to do is in the meantime as i said keep yourself grounded you've got the full moon in capricorn you've got the taurian energy here and then your person has got the sacred space energy so pray say your affirmations speak positively um, do your grounding spend time in nature have a plan um, get a system or a um, some sort of schedule or something in place um, to just keep your emotions under control and focused. That's what you have to do. Keep your energy focused uh, during this so that you don't go off kilter and lose track of what it is that you're trying to do because there's so much emotion flying around. Um, you know, stay grounded, stay focused and you will get there and uh, it looks like a very successful result coming in for you. 
So we have got here um, Sedna Infinite Supply and Seventh House Partners. So this is Seventh House is everything to do with your relationship, but also partners as in business partnerships. Um, the lower courts may also be coming in here as well. So um, the Seventh House is is all one on one personal relationships. Everything to do with uh, everything to do with that. Uh, this is committed uh, partnerships, committed relationships. So whether you are only just starting your relationship, it's saying that you're going to the next level. So the seventh house is a committed partnership or a committed relationship. It's not a love affair anymore. It's moved past that. So it looks like you are going into this now. If you are only new in this relationship or you only have only been in it for a while and it's not really been on that committed full-time relationship basis. If you have already been in this relationship, then it's highlighting that there is a further commitment which is being made here. And um, so, you know, that whatever work that you are doing, um, it's saying that this is coming on. So you may have to apply. As I said, you may have to, the end of a tough cycle, it could be to do with the actual relationship. Perhaps you have been through a tough cycle and it's saying that, you know, just keep going, persevere, do all the grounding and the whatever else we've talked about here to, to make sure that this uh, manifests for you. But it all comes down to manifestation and positivity, uh, really. That is going to be your key here. Um, it's, it's also got Sedna Infinite Supply. You are supplied for today and all of your tomorrows. So any money, monetary concerns or material concerns or like security, anything like that, she's saying that you are supplied for today and all of your tomorrows. You will have a roof over your head. You will have enough to eat. You will have what you need. Um, this is an abundant universe. You just have to tap into that um, and uh, tap into that infinite supply and have faith that it's coming to you. Um, you know, she she also talks about uh, receiving, uh, giving and receiving. They must be done in equal measure. So as I said to you, with the Kuan Yin, you must give to yourself as well as to others. You, they have, it has to be done in equal measure. So, um, you know, giving and receiving must be in balance. If you give too much, you become depleted and resentful. If you take too much, you don't appreciate what you have. So they have, there has to be balance there. And as soon as you've got balance and you're doing both equally, and it takes practice, it takes time to master that. But once you're doing it, it becomes automatic and then you are tapped into the infinite stream of abundance. As I said to you, um, we've got um, third house coming in here. So messages, this is everything to do with communication, third house to, rules, everything to do with that. This is um, written, verbal, body language. Um, it can also be to do with contracts and documents. So I did pick up that on that earlier that you may be waiting for a contract or document or you may be initiating something or signing something. Just as I said, be aware, Mercury retrograde, 29 May to 22 June, that is the minimum. There's a few days on either side. It is in Gemini, which rules the third house. Uh, all communication issues are going to be hugely important. So pick your words with care. Choose your words with care. Only choose high vibe words, you know. Um, at walk your talk and um, exchanging information, exchanging ideas um, and, you know, research. Uh, it could be communicating with others or it could be receiving like news or information. You could also be hearing gossip. So avoid that if possible, because that could backfire on you badly. Um, the third house can also be to do with um, uh, con connections or communications with general relatives, aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, siblings. Uh, comes in as well uh, and your person has got the fourth house so I'm thinking there's family relations going on here it can also even be neighbors uh, which could also be connected to uh, relocation or moving or changing something in the home all of those things come in um, but it really is about your communications be pristine about what you're saying be very careful check everything there could also be um, a car journey with this uh, this can deal with short journeys nearby uh, or you know what you can term whatever is short for you, but it's it's not it's not normally international or very long distance. But there's a short it can involve short journeys, vehicles like cars, maps, things like that. Something that requires a little bit of planning. Uh, all of these issues come in with the third house. They're highlighted for you in this, uh, and I do feel it's going to be very important because you are Aquarian and because there's a lot of Gemini energy going on, uh, and the third house is coming up. There's Lots of things which I've already talked about which are going to come up or something is going to be highlighted for you. Um, you could just ought to be having intense conversations with your person uh, or it's connected to your, your person or family members. You know, you can just see how it uh, comes in for you. 
Thank so you. as I said, with the Sagittarian full moon lunar eclipse, which is happening on the 26th of May, something may jolt for you then. Um, now, a full moon lunar eclipse can be something that bubbles over. So this could be something that's been in the background or it has been there, but you haven't really uh, had all the pieces together to deal with it. And then now it comes unexpectedly, very quickly, very abruptly, and you've got to deal with it. It can be a way of shifting you out of a comfort zone or a rut. It can do that, especially if there's a move and you're you're struggling with this uh, change of environment. Um, you know, all of that can come in. Um, it can also be the the lunar eclipse can also be a, a sort of a, a shift, um, a, a mental shift or a realization or a perception shift where you are now seeing something that you just didn't see before, or you are realizing something. You could be realizing that where you have been or where you have spent your time for. For, for, uh, for the longest uh, period um, is now over and complete and you now need to move. So it can, it can be a, a, a mental or a perception shift or it can be a physical shift where you now have to deal with something and you'd feel a little bit uncomfortable once that uh, lunar eclipse has occurred. So whatever it is, some golden opportunity is coming in for you here. So this is like a door swinging open. Um, but with the sea, um, there's joy there coming and you've got the dolphins. Um, she looks amazing in that water. It's something that's coming to you on the tide. It's something that's coming directly for you within your relationship, either for the both of you or one or either of you. Something coming directly for you. It's written in the stars for you. It's the ideal uh, fit. Now, um, what she's saying is that don't hesitate or procrastinate when you see this opportunity coming towards you. Just know that all that you are, all your experience, all your skills, um, everything, your talents, uh, your, your everything, that you, just everything about you will accompany you into this opportunity when you go. So dive in, take it up um, and go with it because on the other side of this is, um, is, is happiness um, happiness and joy and just satisfaction, fulfillment of some kind coming in for you. So don't hesitate, don't procrastinate, go for it. Um, and know that you, you're fully qualified uh, in whatever way is coming in for you, whatever that may be. Um, you're fully ready and qualified for this um, this wonderful opportunity coming in for you. But it's going to come straight for you. Um, it does say that if you, for some reason you do hesitate and it passes you by, then you will need to wait for the next opportunity to come in. And that's divine timing, you know. So you you just have to be ready the next time that it comes. But do, do go for this because I feel the opportunity is ripe. Um, there's a there's a good opportunity coming in for you. And, uh, and this will open many doors for you. For the um, outcome or the potential of this... Um, whole reading. Um, we've got Sagittarius IC. Uh, now, as I said, the uh, Sagittarius uh, lunar eclipse, um, something is going to get triggered then, and it could also be Jupiter and Pisces. Uh, both of them are connected to this card, so Sagittarius, uh, the Sagittarian energy. Um, but we've also got Mother Mary, expect a miracle. So, um, as I said, speak what you want into existence. Say your affirmations, say your prayers, connect to the divine, whatever you have to do. Your person may be saying a lot of prayers at this time. Um, Mother Mary, expect a miracle. So have faith that your prayers have been heard and are being answered. Okay, so once you have prayed or said your affirmations or um, whatever it is that you, you know, you're focusing on, whether it's you or your person, um, you, 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 you let it go like a letter. You release it and you let the letter go and you have faith and you have belief that it's coming to you. And then you let it go. You, you detach from it and you just get on with your life. You have fun, enjoy, get out, have fun, do things with your children or let this playful, wonderful inner child come out um, and let that energy, let the universe bring this miracle to you. You get out of your own way once you release it and you let it go. If you keep worrying about it or you keep changing the list of requirements or whatever it is that you've asked or you keep nitpicking about it, then it kind of dissolves the energy. So let it go. Release it and and wait for it to come back. As I said, your golden opportunity is coming. So, you know, your prayer will be answered. It may be may not look exactly as you've as you've um, anticipated or what you've kind of put your um, hopes and dreams on. But. Be alert to the possibility because it's going to come to you and it, it's going to come to you in a way um, where you should recognize it, you know, and uh, it will be a fit. It will be a fit for you in your current situation uh, and may not necessarily be exactly as you've imagined it. It will have perhaps something slightly different or, um, you know, some, some other aspect which has already been thought of by the universe that you may not have thought of. OK, so be open to what it, what the universe brings you. Sagittarius, as I said, very expansive energy. There's the arrow. This is your focus. 
focused intention. Um, this is a breakthrough. This is luck. This is um, expansion. It could even be travel related. As I said, that seems to be involved here. It could be um, even just connecting uh, internationally or with other foreign people. Um, it could also be an adventure or an exploration of some kind, whether this is physically going on an adventure or an exploration or some kind of trip. Um, but it could also be within the mind or, um, you know, as in the form of learning, um, or it can be through philosophy and religion or belief system. So some sort of expansion of your understanding of things. Um, as I say, this could all be purely internal. It depends on you and what it is that you're trying to achieve here in the relationship. But certainly expansion of some kind. There could also be legal success here with this, uh, something perhaps coming in. Um, it can also be, um, you know, to do with um, relationship with in-laws. Something may be settled or sorted out if, there, if there's been trouble with that. It's also the intu intuitive process. Um, and this is tapping into your intuition. Use that. And your person is certainly going to be doing that with the Nemantona. Tapping into the, um, the, the universal consciousness to, for guidance and for inspiration or whatever else, um, may, may be needed in the moment. But it's a very expansive energy and, um, faith and wisdom also come into this as well. So whatever you're going to get that. Um, and that faith and that wisdom will possibly re be renewed um, and all your positive affirmations and everything that you're saying and speaking into existence, you know, will manifest. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Please take, um, don't forget to like and share or uh, like and subscribe. Uh, have, a, have a very good month and um, I will see you next time. Take care.